The International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights was brought into force the 23rd of March 1976. Canada was a signatory to this covenant. The International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights is a covenant that Canada was a signatory to. It was a covenant that expressed the fundamental rights and freedoms of a human being, and it placed obligations upon countries, which were termed state parties, to fulfill within their domestic law the expressions that were found in the International Covenant. So, when we look into the International Covenant, we see in Article 2.2, it states that we're not already provided for by existing legislative or other measures. Each state party to the present covenant, so whoever signed onto the covenant, they undertook or they promised to take the necessary steps in accordance with its constitutional process. Now notice that, the constitutional process. And with the provisions of the present covenant, to adopt such laws or other measures as may be necessary to give effect to the rights recognized in the present covenant. So Canada, as a state party here, okay, had the obligation to make sure that the rights and freedoms that were recognized in the present covenant were given effect through a constitutional process. Now, when you look into the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, we know that in 1982, this enactment or this charter was given force of law. And in it, you find that it says this, The Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms guarantees the rights and freedoms set out in it, subject only to such reasonable limits prescribed by law, as can be demonstrably justified in a free and democratic society. So, within the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, whatever rights and freedoms were guaranteed, in that charter, they could be subject to limitations. Okay? The rights and freedoms in the charter itself could be subject to limitations. So how can they subject the rights and freedoms to limitations? When you look back into the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, Article 5, it states that nothing in the present covenant may be interpreted as implying for any state, which would include Canada, group or person, at any right to engage in any activity or perform any act aimed at the destruction of any of the rights and freedoms recognized herein, or at their limitation to a greater extent than is provided for in the present covenant. So, the state party can limit the rights and freedoms, but only to the extent that is provided for in the present covenant. So, in whatever manner, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights allows the state party, or Canada, to limit the rights and freedoms, then Canada can do it. They cannot just decide, I'll do it any which way. They're under obligation that if they're going to limit any of our rights and freedoms, they have to do it by the expression of law that is provided for in the International Covenant. So we have Canada as a state party now that is under obligation to express the human rights and fundamental freedoms that are found in the International Covenant. They've got no choice. There's an obligation. So we look into the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights in Article 18, and we find the following article of law, or following expression of rights and freedoms. Everyone, now they title everyone, so that includes everyone, every designation, everyone, shall have the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. This right shall include freedom to have or to adopt the religion or belief of his choice, and freedom either individually or in community with others and in public or private to manifest his religion or belief in worship, observance, practice and teaching. So that was one of the freedoms and rights that Canada had an obligation to implement in their constitutional process. Now when we look into the Canadian Constitution Act of 1982, Article 2, we find the following. It states that everyone has the following fundamental freedoms. Freedom of conscience and freedom of religion. So, Canada just fulfilled their obligation. They had that obligation to make sure that this freedom of conscience and freedom of religion was brought forth in their constitutional process, and they did. They included it here in the Constitution Act of Canada, 1982, Article 2. Now, another right and freedom that was granted, or that was placed an obligation upon Canada to make sure that it comes out through domestic law, in the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, Article 19, it states, Everyone shall have the right to hold opinions without interference. Everyone shall have the right to freedom of expression, 
This right shall include freedom to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas of all kinds, regardless of frontiers, either orally, in writing, or in print, in the form of art or through any other media of his choice. So again, these are the rights and freedoms that Canada was under obligation to express within their Constitution. Now we come to the Constitution Act of 1982, Article 2, and we see that everyone has the right for freedom of thought, belief, opinion, and expression, including freedom of the press and other media of, or other media of communication. So the exact same fundamental rights and freedoms that we find in the International Covenants are now being declared in the Canadian Constitution in Article 2. Keep on going. It says in the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, Article 21. Now notice the right and freedom. It says here that the right of a peaceful assembly shall be recognized. No restriction may be placed on the exercise of this right other than those imposed in conformity with the law and which are necessary in a democratic society in the interest of national security or public safety, public order, the protection of public health or morals, or the protection of the rights and freedoms of others. So when we look into the Constitution Act of 1982, Article 2, again we find the obligation that was upon Canada to place these rights and freedoms in their Constitution Act fulfilled. Because here it says, everyone has the right to freedom of peaceful assembly. So you see, Article 19, everyone shall have the right of peaceful assembly. And here we have it, everyone shall have the right of freedom of peaceful assembly. So Canada is fulfilling their obligations. We continue. The International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, Article 22. It says, everyone shall have the right of freedom of association with others. So we find that in the Canadian Constitution, Act of 1982, it says everyone shall have the right of freedom of association. So the rights and freedoms that were enumerated in the Constitution Act in Article 2 are available to everyone. But they state that those rights and freedoms can be limited. They can be limited. However, there are other rights and freedoms that are expressed in the International Covenant that are not so clearly expressed in the Canadian Constitution, nevertheless they are present in there. So one of those rights that a lot of people are waking up to or are aware of is the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, Article 16. And in that article it states that everyone shall have the right to recognition everywhere as a person before the law. Now when you come to the Canadian Constitution Act, you don't find a sentence that is written in that structure where it affords us those rights. Now, you go back into the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, Article 22, and it states that everyone shall have the right to freedom of association. Okay, and in Canadian Constitution Act of 1982, Article 2, it states that everyone has the following fundamental freedoms. Freedom of association. So everyone, the human being, can, can associate with the person. become that Canadian citizen, if they choose to do so. However, you have the freedom of association granted to you through the Canadian Constitution Act, Article 2. So, just like we know that a human being in Canada possesses a juridical personality. So, in, in essence, you are in association, your human being, with a person. That's what they're doing. However, the Canadian Constitution Act grants you, as everyone, the right to have freedom of that association. However, once again, they'll try to limit, limit the actions of your rights and freedoms, but they can only do so through the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. And it is clearly stated in the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights that you have the right to recognition, not an obligation. They can't transfer that. They can't, they can't do that. They can't take that law and say there's an obligation upon you. No then they'd have to take away this one, freedom of association also, which they didn't. So when you look into the Canadian Constitution Act of Canada, Article 2, and you see subsection D, where it states that everyone has the following fundamental freedoms, freedom of association, that is actually expressing the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, Article 16, where it states that you don't have to, that where you can associate with the person, but you don't have to. There's many more, if you will say, uh, lines, or if you will say interpretations, or if you will say expressions of the international laws within the Canadian Constitution that are not drawn out just clearly and directly, because again, I contend that they don't want you to understand clearly what are your rights and freedoms, because if 
everybody would be exercising them, the monarchy would lose all their money. So they do fulfill their obligations, but they do so in a, a deceitful way. Within the Canadian Constitution Act of 1982, you have Article 26 also, where it states that the guarantee in this charter of certain rights and freedoms shall not be construed as denying the existence of any other right or freedoms that exist in Canada. So this is always something, an article of law that you can draw on to back yourself up. If you're getting opposition in one way or another, you can just totally get yourself out of the Charter and out of the Constitution Act of Canada and point to the fact that, listen, the international laws, whatever rights and freedoms they afford me, you have the obligation to make sure that they're fulfilled in my life personally. I'm not talking about a group, just talking about me as one individual. And if you don't, if you claim that I don't have these rights, then I can draw on them from the international law.